sounds and breakdowns. Welcome back to the Chill Sounds and Breakdowns podcast. Uh, we have another episode for you today, and I'm excited because I don't think you can see it in the frame, but we have <laughs> something uh, that this person shot, and it's it's awesome. But the picture behind here, Ed, has been shot by uh, Shooting Point Photos, aka Marcus, and he's here today, and I'm I'm stoked as fuck, honestly. But what's going on, man? Hello, hello. Yeah, I appreciate you coming by. <laughs> <man. no> problem. <laughs> so nervous. I'm just like my first time doing anything like this. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's. It, it's kind of weird like to get used to it mm -hmm. which is why uh I changed the whole setup of like how to do it because like before we were sitting on couches and then I, people I were staring. That. Yeah, so people were staring into a camera and it was like people were aware of it instead of so people were more paid attention to like oh what what should like I be right doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the whole Ricky Bobby like what should I do with my hands right now? You know, <laughs> like it, it was like that. So I like this because it's just like oh we're just gonna Chilling. talk. Yeah, it, it ain't no big deal. But um, I didn't. I guess I, I reflected back, but like my first really interaction with you was when we threw the 420 takedown. And I think you came out to shoot some stuff at a. It was like that DIY venue. It looked like a wedding venue kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was like it was that one. No, it was not 420. I think it was when. It, when were the years that it is what it is played? Because it was like they played twice in a row. Uh that was. They played once, and they played. I think it was before or after Spineless. Oh, okay. Oh, Spineless played been, one of those years. That might have been chill, the Chill Sounds then, too. Was it the first one or second one? Technically, it, so, <laughs> technically so a lot of people think Chill Sounds 2 is the first one, mm -hmm. but like we had one before that. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just like, it was two stages, but it was like just a very small like scale and stuff. But we did it at the same place, that same place. But the second one was that one. So I guess you might have came out that one. Yeah, yeah. it came out to... Because I remember mm -hmm. that... Night nice specifically because it was my first time seeing Spineless, and then I never saw them again. Oh really? <laughs> I, I really liked them a lot because yeah. I was like, man, these guys are like really hard. And no, yeah, I was like, damn. And then after that, I don't know if Jesse and them played after them or later on at night, but I just went for Jesse. Yeah, <laughs> well that's cool. I, I think that like Chill Sounds Two was one of my favorites because it was very like it was post pandemic where like shit was just starting to come off, but people were still like. If you about know. going places, yeah, yeah, and it feeling like a little weird about but it. It was, just it was pretty packed. Yeah, it was, but it was it was just like a hangout like fest. Like it, I don't know, it just felt like you, people were like the the whole like skating through like while bands are playing. Like mm -hmm. I love that. That was, was really just, like that's fucking chill. Like it's so fucking cool. Um, but it was nice. Like uh, so, DJ was the one that decided to throw that, and we all helped that. So this was before mm -hmm. we made Noise Rod. Oh, okay. um, and then uh, he had been like booking some shows, and his idea was just like I just want to do something so that like for like this community you know what i mean it hasn't had something crazy like like that in a while like so i wanted to like do something so we all just like kind of helped out and it's kind of what birthed noise rock later on where we were like okay like i think we can make do this cool more yeah, yeah. Like, no, that's that was the whole point just to make cool stuff but um i mean about you like what so how how long have you been shooting like in, in just in general well, at first i don't know because i've shot your band before mm -hmm. and i like at first i was doing polaroids yeah but like those were fun. Those were cool. Like, people loved that. Like, yeah. sometimes I'd give away the Polaroids to the bands that were, like, touring or coming oh, to town. Oh, sick. And, uh, I don't know, and I, I stopped, and everybody was like, why'd you stop doing that? And mm. I'm like, it got too expensive. I, I, Polaroid film is so expensive. <laughs> they upped the, because it used to be, like, 20 bucks for, like, a two-pack of 10, or, 10 shots mm -hmm. each. And then, um... Recently, they upped it to like thirty six dollars. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> another pack of like eight. Like it's it's less photos and it's more because yeah. Well, so we take Polaroids like after mm -hmm. every like podcast this year, and I'm like, this is a good idea. And I, I, people love them because it's. I, I mean, me personally, I was like, it's tangible. Like it's mm -hmm. something like you can actually physical. Look, yeah, yeah, physical. And I was like, it's nice. I'm like, it's not. It's something sure. Like I can post it or whatever but it's really nice to have something that I'm like hey you were here like yeah. you know it, it, I don't know it just like it got me in a mood and it was all because I found a Polaroid at a at like a freaking like flea market mm -hmm. and then like uh, it was like one of the the one from the 80s that I found and I'm just like oh this is fucking sick and I started taking pictures I'm like this is cool mm -hmm. you know? and now that's why I was just like implementing it here but yeah it's hella pricey like it's super pricey and those like, older cameras take like need the battery cartridge or something yeah so it's a little more expensive my camera wasn't really that old it was kind of like semi-new yeah but like i did my research on it i was like because regular polaroid like the brand mm. they the quality kind of 
it wasn't good for me because yeah. I was outside. Like mm -hmm. that one time I shot like a whole show, and it was really cold. And I looked at my film when I got because I don't look at my pictures until yeah. I get home. And I looked and like everything was blank. Oh no! And I was like, what? So I did my research and I was like, oh, the temp depending on the temperature, sometimes photos won't even like develop. Interesting. So and that I was might like, because I had that on my older one, and I was wondering what happened. But there were some shots where it just like blank. They were just blank. Yeah, yeah. I was like mad about that, and I was like, I spent so much money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just alone, just to shoot a show, like, must be, like, pricey. Um, what do you shoot on now? Uh, a Canon camera. I Can couldn't even tell yeah. you to do it. Okay. But, I mean, it kind of, like, I think it, I, I like that because it kind of goes into, even, like, your username is just, like, uh, what is it? Uh, shoot you know, point shoot photos. point photos. Yeah. Just, like, fuck it. And you you get some really, like, sick shots. Like I said, that that one, I know, I wasn't even the only one immediately to tell you, but yeah, I saw every, it. Everybody was going crazy for that. Uh, I was like, thanks, guys, but, like, I didn't really mean to do that on purpose. Because <laughs> I, I shoot all my shows without my glasses on. Cause, oh, really? Yeah, so, like, sometimes I don't even know what I'm pointing at. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll just click. So that's why it's not point and shoot, boys. Yeah. Shoot point. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, there's, so, like, I, I just, like, for people who don't know what I'm talking about, like, there's this shot of Ed from Ballista and Karama who uh, he's like pointing his guitar like at at you at the camera and uh, you took this shot and I thought you did like a little editing too because that's, that's what little, everybody told me <laughs> there's a little like gleam and sparkle off one of the tuning keys that just looks like almost like a sight on the like the, yeah, on the, the guitar yeah. yeah I'm just like that's so fucking great like, and I immediately was like I need this now like <laughs> I like, remember yeah, like, <laughs> I, I told DJ because like, DJ posted on his story yeah and I was like oh yeah I'm selling OC like prints mm -hmm. and then uh, Ed asked me for some prints and he tried to pay me for them and I was like dude it's a picture of you like why would I do that <laughs> <laughs> and then they made uh, they made merch they yeah, made they the Ballista merch with, with that on it I yeah I was, was like it. oh like the River I don't know if it was River or Robert mm -hmm. uh, they DM'd me and they are like could we use this on a shirt? And I was like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, I'm glad y'all asked because most people don't even like reach out. They just do it, which I don't really care. But yeah. it's, it was pretty cool to see that on a shirt. <laughs> but you've been uh i mean you've been shooting a lot of sh uh, shows um particularly i know you do all your stuff in like black and white is that just like you started like you did it once and liked it and just kept doing it that way or, or? uh i just did it black and white because it's just, like simple mm -hmm. i don't have to worry about color yeah. saturation and stuff and i'm like uh oh, grain black and white post it easy <laughs> <laughs> it's funny i had so i had a Brett in here from Delandria photos and that's that's he was telling me because I was telling him, like yeah I've been like shooting some stuff and he's like so I don't know how to figure out color correction yet or things like that and he's like honestly you ever want to cop out black and white baby like yeah. it's just it's simple it's good to go and it looks great you know I'm like cool like so I've done that on like some stuff and I'm like oh it's nice you know to have that um, but I think I like that's one of the things that I liked about getting a, a camera or a Polaroid or mm -hmm. uh, things it's just like the, the one shot aspect of it because like with the digital format and just like phones and stuff like that in general I find myself just like uh, shooting just a ton mm -hmm. of stuff and I'm like one of these will stick and yeah. uh, which is cool you know because you, you get to pick your shots or whatever but it for me it started taking away like that special moment of like oh we it's to one shot like like that okay yeah. so like that shot it's like oh shit I just took that and it just so happened to everything align and work out I feel like that has a like a really nice feeling because it's straight like out the camera's like, oh, that moment was captured just like that with just like I, the one I, shot. You know I mean? think I remember exactly when I took that photo. Uh, I think it was like the Texas Death Fest that they had in yeah. Andy's bar. Yeah. And then I think they were doing the Triple H cover. <laughs> doing a Triple H cover. Yeah, because it was funny because. Um, they're, you know, everybody's going wild. Yeah. And my friend's, like, spraying, like, doing the Triple H water thing, <laughs> like, in the air. And Zach's, like, looking around, like, who's spraying water over it? Spraying water. <laughs> and I'd seen the Ed. And so, I, like, I was at the very side, mm -hmm. and I'm, like, taking pictures. And then I go to the front of Ed, and Ed's, like, going crazy, like, always. And then I didn't even oh, notice he did that. Mm -hmm. And when uh, I got home, I looked at it, and I was like, oh, he pointed at the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's one of my favorite people. Like, I mean, me and Ed have been friends for, like, a really, like, pretty good time now. Um, and 
the the way he's always performed is like that level of energy and it's i love that like i there's a guy named um I don't know his last name, but I know his name is Sergio. He plays in, like, a shit ton of bands. Like, mm. All the, like, Swan Corey bands. Like, he's got, like, that giant curly hair. But that's what he does. And I, like, I, I remember him playing with uh, Stolas. So There's a band called Stolas. And uh, he was jumping, like, all over the place. Like, wild. Like, I'd never once seen him fall, but he'll run and jump on his, like, tiny little amp that's on the floor. And it rocks. And then, like, he rocks back with it. And just, oh, like, I I'm hate, like, I hate how people are you? do that. It's and so he's scary. Doing, I'm like, you're going to bust ass. And every show, he's, like, wild and out like that. And I've never it's once never seen fallen him fall. Once. I'm going to jinx him. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> like, if, if you bust your ass. Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, like uh, that energy is is captured, and I think like even like his facial expression and he's like really like fucking like he looks angry. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 cool because then you'll see him after the show and he's, he's like, like oh, super yeah, nice, yeah, yeah. He's the sweetest like dude ever. Like at um, Chill Sounds uh, or the four twenty breakdown, uh, me and her, me and my girlfriend went, mm-hmm. and uh, I saw Ed. And I was like, oh hey, and he's, I was like, I don't know you're gonna be here today, and he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm actually performing. And I was like, with who? And he's like, with you. Yeah. And I was like, oh that's cool. And I was like, can't wait to see that. So just like, he was super nice that day. That show was so. Um, was it y'all's last one? It was our last one. Yeah, we weren't supposed to play. <laughs> so I, it's funny because we technically broke up like the year before. We were supposed to play Chillstone because that was the, the the 420 takedown show we did with Die. Um, and we were supposed to play Chill Sounds. Shit happened. Everything fell through. We we're like, you know what? It's a sign and we're done. And then uh, we were planning this show and then we had a lineup you know, set to go. And then uh, a, like one band dropped, and we're like, I can't. Well, yeah, no, I, 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 I get around. I was just like, I told DJ, I was like, Hey, man, let me know. Like, <laughs> you, we'll fill in. Just jokingly. Then another band dropped, and I'm like, No, we have. Bro, to. I know it's cake, <laughs> but I think, I think we're gonna have to like, fill in. So we had like three, I think, practices before that. It was a good. But set. it was just like you know falling back into it. You know what I mean? And uh, it was kind of nice. I loved it because I feel like I never got to play in that band at the level that I was at like you know what I mean like I had I'm like I'm like way but like cause shit when I recorded in the studio I made stuff that I'm like I hit that once and I'm I never hitting it again but like, you did hit it that show and on those I was, that's why I was mad I was like I know I can do it now and this shit pisses me off that I'll never get to play it again so that was super fun and I was just like you know there's no real pressure let's go out there and have fun and I wanted to play with those guys like again um, and it was fucking great yeah like I I definitely definitely like had such a fun time playing and i like that's the only thing i miss like being part of like the scene and like part of noise right in this i'm like i get to see like so many bands play all the time and i'm always like a tiny bit not jealous but i'm just like i really like miss that like a lot um i don't need to go on and seduce you can i but seduce you now because we got a situationship And this, like, what's kind of what your introduction was into, like, this music scene? Like, it's- Ooh. Uh, well, at first I was shooting, like, I don't know how to explain it. Mm-hmm. My friends in DTB played one of the, I think they played the 420 Breakdown. Those okay. were the first guys I shot, I think, when shows started coming back. They did a house show. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I got this camera. I got this little Polaroid. Mm-hmm. I was like, maybe I'll just go and see what happens. So I go... It's, it's really fun. Like my friend Harrison, he thought I was in the band. He thought I was in one of the bands playing. Oh yeah, because <laughs> I, I was. It was my first time going to a show by myself, mm. and I was just like sitting there in the back of the uh, backyard because they had a. It was I can't remember the people that put it together, but they had like a bounce house. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, they had a bounce house in the back of the backyard, and they had like bought pizza for everybody because I guess they were like trying to get people to come. Yeah, come out. And uh, I met my friend Harrison through that show. I'm just chilling in the back by myself, like on my phone, mm-hmm. like because I got the thing you do, like, when yeah. It's like yeah. <laughs> when you're by yourself, yeah, I was like gotta... scrolling, and then yeah. uh, he it's comes like, up to me. This is very important right now. <laughs> he, he comes up to me. He's like, uh, so um, when you go on, and I was like, oh, I'm here just to shoot, shoot pictures. He's yeah. like, who are you here to see? I was like, DTB. He's like, you here to see us? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, why us? And I was like, well, because back in high school, I was like, y'all were like everybody talked about y'all. Yeah, like everybody loved those guys. I still like them. Yeah, I mean, I'm waiting. TV's fucking really good. They're yeah, really good. They're really good. But it, I asked him, I was like, you guys plan on playing any shows soon? But he said that um, he has a new project. I don't, don't remember the name of it. 
That's I'm fine. sorry. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> no, those guys are really. I think. Uh, I I think one of those shows was like the first time my experience with them, and I was like, where the because it's that's along the lines of more of the stuff that I like to listen to, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, why have I just like never like heard of this like before? Um, and they're really good. Um, I know they do a lot of more like instrumental stuff, um, but they're playing it so fucking sick. Their um, lead, Aaron, he's in a lot of projects. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like, a lot. It's usually once, like, someone's really good, like, they end up doing, like, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'm like, I wish I could be like you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever played in a band before? No, never. No. Just strictly photos. I like to be behind the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Or go to shows. Like, I love, I've been going to shows since I was, like, 16, 17. What was, the, what was your first show, you remember? My first show? It was actually a festival. Yeah. It was, uh, so what? Uh, all I remember who was on the bill was Unity, Power Trip, Shit. Uh, Story So Far. But I missed the Story So Far because mm. I thought it was gonna rain, but it didn't. Oh, uh, wh- where was that one at? <laughs> at Air Hog Stadium in Grand Prairie. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I think that was like the first and last time I ever went. <laughs> <laughs> to so what? Yeah. Uh, I remember this. The first so what I went to was a. Uh, they still had it at the Plano Center, and I remember like I. I. It's funny to think back now. Now that I'm like like now I'm part of like the scene and like I have a bunch of people like that I knew, would know. But I remember going to that show by myself. I'm just like I. I, I was really into uh, a day to remember. So mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, they're playing it. I bought a ticket just for one band mm-hmm. and went, and I was like there from the morning and just like watched every fucking band but it's always so hot I'm like what? well luckily, that one was inside it like, was inside so, I mean it was still hot like there's a shit ton of people like all next to each mm-hmm. other but I remember that was my first experience getting punched in the face oh, <laughs> from it wasn't even like a mosh pit thing uh, this dude like was coming back and like kicking me and I was like I'm like I mean that's fine like I'm at the edge of the pit like it's gonna happen mm-hmm. or whatever and he, but then he kept coming coming and I'm just like alright so the last time I just like shoved, shoved him back yeah. that's it and then like all of a sudden like I'm just chilling there I'm like I'm not even paying attention just watching the band and then I just like from the side catch a glimpse of like something I'm like what the fuck and, and by the time I like, turn it yeah, yeah, he just, oh he just sucker God. punches me <laughs> and runs off and I'm just like but he immediately like they had security and they immediately grab him and like kick him out I'm like I, I love the people what? that are like everybody thinks they're like mean for crowd killing and stuff but like at the end of the day like they'll come up to you after a show and like oh I'm so sorry like give you a hug or something yeah yeah there's like (laughs) there's like a a a balance to it I think there's certain things that you have to like expect you Mm -hmm. know what I mean Uh, I can't remember what show it was I think it was a a a, a, a Kubla show that that was happening maybe last year and uh I guess whatever lineup there were, like, people were complaining that there was people, like, moshing for Kublai. And because the other lineup, like, didn't have that same people were just, like, jamming out It was, or like, whatever. two different... But I'm like, yeah, like, it's gonna... You can't, like, stop that from happening. And you can easily... Like, you could avoid it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you can just, like, not be close to, like, the pit or whatever. Um, it's just... That was one thing that I kind of, like... When I was new to it, I didn't understand. I'm just like, oh, like, people, like... I was like, I get people moshing, but then, like, the, the crowd killing stuff, I was probably, like, on the other end. I was like, oh, like, why are they kids, like, trying to hit me and stuff? But now I'm just like, oh, that's, you know, that's part of it. Like, that's part of the whole yeah. fun. Like, because then I saw I saw Kublai at So What, and that was fucking awesome. You I, know what I mean? I think I saw them before they played the last So What, because they were with Terror. They were playing with Terror. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw them the night before <laughs> in Austin mm. with, uh, it was them, Terror, and Bitter End. Okay. Bitter End was, like, a really good texas band those guys have been around for a long time i didn't even know yeah yeah there's been that's that's a that's a thing that's really cool about like i'm, I'm probably i'm very biased towards texas but we, there's so many like really good fucking it's like bands. a mix of genres like, across every, all yeah. genres you know what i mean like it's it's we have a very good like diversity in that and then again i think we get spoiled with dfw uh dallas and fort worth like there's just so much like shows that you can go to like if there's uh, like one show you want to see or yeah. there could be two shows happening at the same time but you can go see the opener and then leave and go see the headliner somewhere Dude, we else. did that we so we had a show um we did one show we were hosting two shows on the same day mm-hmm. one was um who was in in dallas i think we had a band from oklahoma uh, lilac kings and didn't, another band didn't uh and deep had, do that Deep Decision have done that before. Like they played a show, so. yeah, and then they rushed to. I forgot. I know they did it before though. Yeah, because we had a show at Cheap Steaks and one at uh, Growl. It's in was Denton, it? but it, what's the downstairs? It's, it's it used to. Be, well, it's not J and J's anymore, but it was J and J's. Uh, it was like uh, I think it was since my beloved's like EP release or something. Um, and then uh, 
one of the guys actually from the god awful choose grant plays in backacre and they played a backacre set at chief stakes drove all the way to fucking den to play oh the god. set with the god awful truth um and and like i said and we were running both of those shows simultaneously you know and uh, but i was like i was like oh it's fun like it's fun that that's those are two radically different genres mm-hmm. and then like you know they're still happening on the same day like within you know driving distance you know it's not crazy like to to do that you know what i mean if you wanted to you could like see two shows in one day i know? think my uh, there's a band i've been listening to a lot i saw them at cheap steaks mm-hmm. and they played a set and then they were like oh we're doing a free show down the, like literally down the street so yeah like come out later like around nine and get in there it's pretty cool yeah it's a band called bleed bleed yeah. I, I, I know their logo <laughs> is, there, is it more uh is it like shoegazing? Is that one? Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah, I have seen Bleed. Ugh, those I saw Bleed at, uh, They're so good. Oh, what's that venue called? Double Wide. Yeah, I saw them at Double Wide. And then that venue's cool. Like, I like how small it is. I don't know why I have a thing with, like, small venues that... The smaller the better. It's just, I don't know. It just doesn't take much, like, obviously to fill it up. But people in, like, small rooms just, like, have the best time. You know what I mean? Because you're just... Energy is just so contagious, like, in those small rooms. That's why, like... Even in Growl's a little bigger like than than like Double Wide, but Growl has that like attitude. All, every show that I've seen at Growl has the same. I effect. wish Growl had a stage, but that's why we have Division Brewery behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which that, I saw that they have that stage out there, and I, I like that they're that they've they've done quite a bit. I think for the because that that place has such a fucking cool vibe, and like every show I've been there, like the energy's just been nuts. Like, and and I've seen like multiple genres like play there uh i know hardcore ones are like my favorites to go there but like i know what i'm getting into like going there like all right like i wear the right stuff like i'm gonna be sweaty as fuck by the time i get out of here like it's always hot yeah like after each set i'm like dang i gotta gotta go back (laughs) outside outside yeah everyone scatters out outside immediately to like chill um but yeah so so shooting is really like what got you into i guess around this scene stuff so yeah but like my first ever photo i've ever shot was a band called uh together pangea it's like back Pangea. in back in 2016 okay but like i i took those photos and then i was like uh, i don't really feel confident doing this mm. and then i picked it back up after the pandemic because mm-hmm. <laughs> i was like well these are memories for people yeah and so like that's when i want to keep it at mm. as like memories for people that are like oh this show happened this and this time and like it was a really good time yeah. or something like that it's it's they're really like nice like things to have just photos in general or anything any like videos and things like that you don't realize like how much they mean no matter like what they look like the mm-hmm. fact that like someone made their way out made, there yeah i made their way out there see like I, i'm like sure like the the you know dtv the first time you went were like you're shooting it like why like oh because y'all are cool like yeah. i like y'all like that's it, it's really i don't know why it's like this baffling moment at sometimes like wait especially if you're starting out like in a band where a person you don't know is like, oh, yeah, I like you. Like, there's this. Or, like, you see now that people, like, tag, like, every video as you put it, people are like, oh, people are there, like, watching it and, like, yeah. know who we are and, like, are sharing it and, like, are having fun. That's what, like, I, I think is a really cool aspect about taking pictures. I know when I started, like, the first time, the, the point I got, a, the reason I got a camera, like, in the beginning was, like, to start a vlog channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it was literally right before the pandemic, like, it really hit. Like, it was I think in March, like that first week of March. But my whole thing was, uh, I wasn't doing much. I think I was like, I think I was holding myself out in the house. This was before the pandemic. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, I was like, I'm not doing anything fucking fun. Like days are just fucking <laughs> passing and I'm just like existing. Like it just kind of like, sucks. They'd have like live streams of like people playing sets or something. Yeah. Yeah. So then I like, I just got that. I'm just like, you know what? Let's just record us having fun. And I, I looked at it that way. I'm like, these might seem dumb or whatever. I go, but at the end of the day, these are going to be like, my version of like my home movies like mm-hmm. what i'm gonna show like my friends and stuff like that i'm like oh look look we used to do this fucking dumb shit you know um and i think it's i think it's just really important to have like something like that where you're able to look back, look on, back yeah. and like it's nice it's like it's nice to see that um and and have like something from that but especially like if you're going out and shooting like these bands um it definitely must like feel super like cool for them to see the next one especially i think now like you're getting a little bit more attention on them so people like see you like post from a set and like immediately want to go through like oh like that show because there's a lot of people that know you now your photos and like know that you're probably going to be at these shows yeah. where they're at you know what i mean so they're probably like looking forward to seeing some of that um 
how is that like reaction vote? Because I know like I because I remember when I like texted you about the photo, like I was like, there's not like you're not the only one that's already asking. Yeah. About that. So how's that like? I'm pretty sure you're getting get a little more attention. Uh, well, like people always like outside of the scene, like people at my jobs and stuff. They're like, mm. so like, do you do it for like likes and stuff? And I'm like, no, I just I I don't really care about likes and stuff like yeah. that. I'm just like it depends on their base, like their fans, mm-hmm. whether they're like they interact with these photos so i'm like most of the time i'm like okay like if it's cool it's cool if it's not then oh well <laughs> yeah i i think it's a good way to see it uh it's really tough once you uh i was talking to um actually to marco about this and we we're talking about like once you create uh your passion into like uh, the business format it's like reminding yourself that you still need to make it fun um because yeah, you get I, it, yeah. It's always been like a hobby. Like I don't want it to be yeah. like a burden or like for me to feel burnt out or anything. Yeah, which is good thing because like I feel like every time that I would like doing something uh, and really like just want a whole ass like when I did music, I'm like I fucking love this, and it was never I was never thinking like. Oh, this is how we need a strike, which is probably why, like, you know, we're in make anything. But I had fun. Like, I look back on those years and I'm like, dude, I had a fucking blast. You know what I mean? I played some cool shows and I, like, created this, like, really cool music that and I like. Like, a lot of friends fun. from yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just like, I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? But, like, there's always this, like, outside pressure sometimes from, like, people who see either, like, I feel like it's people like don't have something that they they're passionate about anymore that they focused on, um, but the, everything you do has to be like, well, how do you make money from that? You know what I mean? Like you know, whether, it's, whether it's like music, whether it's like um, when people have asked me like this is like, oh, like well, how are you making money? I was like, uh, like that's not the priority. Yeah, it's like, not why I'm here. Not, it's yeah. not why I'm doing it. Like I'm doing it because it's like it's fun. Like I need, uh, and I've, I've always I've I've said that I'm like if this if all this does is make me happy and like and I keep like creating it, I go and I go and like work a regular ass job and that's the way it stays i'm like at least i am happy you know what i mean like i have something it's shitty when you only do the other half of that and don't have anything like like that anymore then you realize like fuck like i'm just like not doing anything before i before we read because uh so my band um i used to have under oblivion technically we started in high school Mm -hmm. and then we like just gave it up for like years or whatever and we got back to it and i realized in that like period i had nothing that i like really did other than just try to pick up anything else nothing 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 (laughs) like i didn't have another hobby i didn't have anything like that i was just working and like you know going out and partying but there was nothing that i had like that i enjoyed doing um and it wasn't until like i started playing music again i'm like oh shit like i'm i need like to have something i need a it's not everybody but i'm like i think for me i'm like i need a creative outlet like no matter what Mm. like it is so like recently what i started doing because like uh i mean i've been doing this for a while um, I picked up my camera again because, like, we run noise. Where I'm like, oh, it'd be kind of nice if we had like recaps and stuff like that. But I also are you don't the one want... that take the pictures, or you gotta have somebody else take the pictures? Uh, which pictures? Oh, pictures normally are are somebody we have. The little recaps that I've been putting out, those are all me. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've been trying to like learn how to do that. But I'm like, okay, so I found that balance. Like, I have a place where I can use this as part of noise rap but I also have a place where I can experiment and get better but I, I just like want to have fun because those are really fun because I feel like with every band that I shoot it's going to be different like because we sh- have shows with so many fucking genres that like I'm editing an indie video mm-hmm. yesterday I did like an alt rock band and then I like do hardcore bands and, like it's all different vibes so it's always interesting mm-hmm. um, so I'm like yeah like and I realized that I'm like oh I miss being behind the camera you know what I mean and I was telling like uh, Marco about that I was like it's really nice to not have to really worry about like you know what am i getting like on and these i i don't worry because it's just like it's kind of low pressure and it's mm-hmm. like really just like a conversation but i don't have to worry about like oh like what are we saying here like what's this structure i'm like oh no i'm just i'm like they're they're the ones doing like all the work i'm just here like trying to make them look mm-hmm. as cool as i can and it's really nice like which I, I think it's the same feeling with like when you shoot people it's like hey like i want them to have i try to get them in the moment yeah yeah because yeah, you you um when you perform i think you you're so outside of it that once you look at it again like if you see a video of it you realize that like oh shit like I was, made me look I, good yeah <laughs> I, like, I was doing that shit you know what i mean but like it's it's a totally different experience like when you're the audience versus when you're the uh performer you know what i mean so it's it's cool that you you offer that a capture i think it's i think it's really nice for people to have like to reflect um and it's cool that you enjoy doing it um yeah so I, you, when i first started doing uh photos or work i was working like two jobs <laughs> damn okay <laughs> so like sometimes i'd i'd work my two jobs and then a show would happen that day i'd go to that show i wouldn't sleep and then i'd go to my night job 
And I did that once, and my friend was like, you're insane, dude. Like, you haven't slept. I was like, no, I, I didn't sleep. I just came, about to go to work, then sleep after, because I'm off from my other job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but, I mean, you you create those moments. I mean, the, you're doing it, especially, like, you're saying, like, mm-hmm. he's like I'm just doing this for, for me, you know, because mm-hmm. I enjoy doing it. You know that you're doing that for that purpose, mm-hmm. yeah, because you love doing it. You know what I mean? Like, that's, it's it's always the one thing that has stuck with me about, like, uh, and you've probably heard me say this a bunch of times, but like the way to find your passion is like, what do you find yourself doing that no one's forcing you to do, but you spend time on it? You know what I mean? Like that's that's time out of your sleep. Like you're driving out and like going to shows because you enjoy doing this. And no one's forcing you like, oh, okay, now I have to edit and put these out. Like no one's telling uh, you to do that. I, you, like, I, I don't know if you're seeing, but huh? like I edit on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they, which is fucking, it's so cool. But again, it's, it's that's how you know like that's what you should be doing you know what i mean because you enjoy it like it's i think it's a very simple concept that uh i, I lose sight of sometimes mm-hmm. when i'm like i go that's why i'm doing it i go at the root base of all this stuff like um i do it because i like doing it like and that's that's what i think you need to keep like that's the hand on the wheel that you need to keep it's like yeah you enjoy doing this like once it becomes not fun you need to figure out how to make it fun <laughs> make it fun again or if you're past it then like okay how to you take, know, a break. Go, I mean, yeah, take a take break i mean take a break or not <laughs> Not do it because yeah. Once it becomes, uh, like too much, like uh, like work or or you know just where you feel like oh shit, I gotta I gotta do this again. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like it, you might need to take a little step back and breathe there. Like it's it's good for you, especially if you like doing it. Um, but I, I like I said, uh, it's it's kind of nuts how like our paths have like into like yeah connected. we've like we've seen i've seen you at shows and stuff and i was like mm, maybe i should go talk to him because <laughs> I, I see you like interacting with other people and yeah. i'm like uh i'll just wait till the time is right i i, I like i am so nervous all the time like when i'm outside like i know like certain people like i get uh i'm doing better but i always talk about like having like hella imposter syndrome where i'm just like I might have just talked to like this person. Like I, I've had people that I like I'll have on the podcast, mm-hmm. and then like outside I will see them, and I'm like, but I don't know if they like actually want to talk mm-hmm. to me. I was like, they've already been to like my fucking house. Yeah, like, talked like, like, already been part- time. Yeah, I was like, like, I'm sure like it's fine. But even then, I remember um, before we, uh, we did the ballista podcast, like with River, I'm like, I don't know if I'm cool with her. Like, uh, am I cool with River? Like, I don't know. We haven't talked. I was like, ah, I don't know. Then uh, I actually at that. Uh, the uh, the Texas Death Fest, like I saw her walking by, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna whole ass it. I'm like, Rah! it's like I went up and like hugged her, hugged her, and uh, she was like, oh yeah, I was like, oh y'all are coming on the podcast, like oh yeah, they have a lot. And because I had invited Zach, and mm-hmm. Zach was uh, was like, oh like everyone wants to come yeah. too. And I'm like, okay, yeah, fuck yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. Um, which again, even like when you told me, like I mean. You didn't make it, but I'm calling out cake disorder, which is funny. <laughs> it's funny because, like, he's come up on the podcast so many times because he's my I, example. I told him, I was like, you have to come. And he was yeah. like, uh, the night before, he was like, uh, I'm just really tired. I, I believe like, it. He's doing a lot of shit. But, yeah, he's funny because he's the one, like, one of those people that I, for the longest time, Everybody. remember his username instead of fucking his name. Uh, and I would always forget, but I do know now, Jake, okay. I think when people started calling me by my username, like, in person, I'm like, can can you use my real name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 an interesting one. I I think uh, I mean I just have my name like as a real, but like people always wonder what like what is what does OC stand for? It's like it doesn't stand for anything. It's just an easier way to say, say my, your name. Like, say my name. Pronounce like, it. Yeah. Like, when I got the email, I was like, oh, that's how you. That, that's what that means. It's just like OC, yeah, OC. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's funny because he's literally the one where I'm just like, oh, like yeah, cake disorder. I'm like, yeah, let's. And I, I don't know what that means. Oh. I met that guy on my birthday. Oh really? At emo night, it was so funny. Well, he doesn't remember because he was drunk. <laughs> but the next show that we met each other at, uh, we only interacted like a little, mm-hmm. and then I uh, went on a trip, and then I came back, uh, and we just started hanging out from there. <laughs> yeah, it's I I think this, that's what's cool about music. Uh, and live shows, uh, which is why I love them coming back. And, and I think that's why people. Time. It's so easy. Like you, it really is. It, it does feel like I said. I get like I'm nervous. Like it shows sometimes, but it's so easy, especially if you're there to see like this show. I go, you're both there to do that. Like so, it's bit you. Like you already know you got one in. Like on being relatable with something. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, we both like this. You know what I mean? You see, you, it's like oh, I, I like this band. You like this band? Cool. Easy to start talking to. And most. In my experience, most people have had like a good interaction, like with 
being approached and being like just talking about something. If they don't, you know that vibe immediately. We're like, oh, they're not open to talking. Cool. It's and it's not the biggest deal in the world, you know. Yeah. But most people like uh, and I, I, I've said this a lot. Like the the hardcore scene was the one that I was like intimidated by. I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's literally it's an it's so dumb because I had so many friends that were already in it. It's just I'm like oh I literally it's it's as, it's as reductive and stupid of being like oh I'm not tough enough for this crowd like it's whatever like and everybody's so fucking sweet like literally everybody that I've met and made friends like it's the nicest fucking well, thing like I world. mentioned earlier like if people crowd kill you they'll apologize like not most of the time they'll apologize yeah mm-hmm. like it's 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 again it was just it's, and, and it, it took me realizing that that's just the part of how you like that person enjoys this music you know what I mean and that's how they express that's literally it's it's the equivalent of dancing to a fucking song somewhere else like that's what it is like, I've had a friend that broke his arm like twice like, at a hardcore oh, shit <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I mean the last show I was at Rubber Gloves I think I've twice that I've gone to Rubber Gloves and like the ambulance has had to come one guy um, was it um <sighs> what show was it played uh was it Melissa Mind was Force? one of them. Yeah, I Mind had, Force shows. I think. I think. I mean, it might be because I, I know it's multiple that they've had. But I just went to the. I think the Y two K fest that they had, and somebody like their knee. I don't, I don't actually. I might be hearing this story from one story to the other person, but they were like, "Oh yeah, his knee bent the other way," and I'm just like, "What?" But the ambulance was there, and they were taking some dude out. I'm like, "Holy shit!" You oh my know what God. I mean? But um, I don't, it's just it's just a fucking that the energy. At Texas Death Fest when I was there, was just fucking. I love nuts. like small venues like that when yeah. they get packed. That and it and there's this like that tunnel like style and it was all and they have like the balcony, the top. balcony which people were fucking climbing, climbing on. on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like holy shit. I, uh, I remember I was trying to record at that uh, at that show, and I was like recording someone during uh, Ballista. They they were on stage, and they um, uh, they one guy jumped over me and I like I got it and I was like cool. My idiot ass was like, you know, I was like, I want to see what that looked like. And so I, I start looking at the video and then I'm like, wait, that's really dumb. And then I look up and then the guy just like fucking flips into back me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. I mean, but I'm like, oh yeah, I asked for it. You know what I mean? Like I'm not paying attention. I think the um, craziest show that I was like, that I was scared for was when I was in Florida. Mm-hmm. I was shooting this uh, thing called FYA Fest. It's like, they have like a bunch of hardcore bands. Yeah. And uh, I was shooting in pictures of this band called Drain, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Like I, I saw videos. Of, like, I saw them before, but I yeah. also saw like videos of them. And recently, they started uh, throwing out surfboards and pool noodles at the, the crowd. Point. Yeah, <laughs> so people could stage dive with them on. Oh, that's fucking but cool. I got smacked so many times. <laughs> I mean, like, I, even my camera got messed up. Like my lens wouldn't like twist back. Oh no! And I was like, "Oh, well, I guess this is the end." Yeah. <laughs> I guess this is the end. And then I like managed to twist it back and keep shooting, and like I was like, okay, this is a little scary. Yeah, that's it is. It, that's that is the. But like, I don't. I don't. Most of the time, that. I really don't care about my equipment. It's yeah. kind of bad to say, but like <laughs> no, if, if, it, if it breaks, it breaks. Like that'll probably be like the last show I ever shoot. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we're definitely starting a fundraiser to get you <laughs> shooting again. Um, yeah, it's kind of it, it is. It is uh, with equipment and, and things like that. It, it's kind of weird how it derails. Like I, I mean, I just recently had a derailment with like, um, so Bert, who does Bert shot, who shoots like a few of the shit. Like that the was guy the with second the crystal. Camera. Uh, that was Brent. That was no. Brent. Yeah, Bert was a, a friend of mine uh, that uh, is a friend of mine that was helping me with the podcast for a bit. Um, but their camera crapped out, and that was the camera that we were using for the podcast, the second one. Oh. And so I was just like, oh, shit. Like, all of a sudden, there's just, like, no cameras. And I had, I think, well, that never, I had yours booked, right? And then we mm-hmm. had to reschedule because that's, like, what happened. Yeah. So I lost that camera, and I'm like, okay, like, what do I do? Like, because, uh, I mean, replacing a camera, uh, the one we have was, like, a 1000 bucks, And I'm just like, I have to pull a 1000 bucks like, out of somewhere. And I kept looking, like, is there a cheaper one? And there was cheaper ones, but then I'm like... I'm gonna have to learn another camera, and like it's gonna be a little different. Mm-hmm. Like, what if it was all like what ifs? Like, it's like I don't, because no one was really telling me like specifically. I'm like, I need it to run for at least an hour, like or longer. I go, I know that one does. Yeah. I go, I know this. So I we use the Sony 6400. I'm just like, I know that one does. I go, and this one says that it does. I go, but what if I buy it and it doesn't? Like, and 
I don't want to find out during one of these like going and it just all they just turn off and yeah. I'm just like oh fuck because now has, I got to buy a new battery which or it something, happened yeah. yeah it happened when uh, uh, when I was borrowing a different camera I think um, I saw your story and you're like I'm waiting at Best Buy <laughs> yeah I was just like oh fuck. and then I yeah I ended up going to B and H which it, I looked out because I waited I waited I'm just like. Okay, I, it's a big purchase. I, we're going to wait it out. And I re- did some more research, and I was looking at a different one, and I just happened to go, you know what? Let me look at it again. And I found it, and uh, for some reason, that day that I looked at it, it was on sale for like $150. Mm. Oh, so and I'm just like, all right, let's fucking just do it. Like, let's, you know, uh, it's not going to be that much. In the long run, like, it's going to help me. Like, now they're like, they're both mine. They both can stay here. Like, I just have them here all the time. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes my setup easier you know what i mean and i and i want to again i want to keep doing these like it, i i uh, i like doing them and i like what i can offer it's like my thing of what i can offer for like creators and just mm-hmm. like bands and like and, like i want to share like people doing cool shit like because you got the of, you got the noise route thing and you want them to have like a recap of yeah that like show. i want I, like that's so that was uh so noise route started like with you know a, a few of us getting together and just like how do we do this better you know mm-hmm. what i mean like how do we like uh, try to do shows like in, in a way it's like okay we want to throw cool shows cool that's that's dj's department like dj's like the one that does all the booking and every show that gets done like that they're booking like uh, none of us do like booking and mine was like i go when i was in a band i was always trying to think of ways of create like content stuff for mm-hmm. us but i always found it like that was kind of annoying to have to think about that and worry about like writing music and performing so mm-hmm. like all this started um, I was just I happened to be listening to like podcasts at the moment mm-hmm. and we were doing chill sounds and I was just like what if I go because DJ was trying to bounce ideas like how do we promote this how do we promote this and I'm like I go you know what I can so I can start a podcast interview some of those like let's just I can do it get some of the bands on let's start. bro I had no fucking business like <laughs> offering that when I had I didn't have any of I had one camera I had to figure out like all of it mm-hmm. um I think all the mic initially and you'll catch like the first like few episodes where everybody has a different like type of mic microphone mm-hmm. like it's just whatever DJ had lying around the studio um, and then um, we had those and I'm just like I learned I think Jesse was my first one so I'm like can you do it because I like I think that was the one I watched and I was like wow I was like this is pretty cool which is nuts we did like 20 minutes of just like shooting the shit and I'm like I can uh, it's it's dumb but like I was like I can talk like I know I can Keep a conversation that. And like going. as you know, as I've as I've continued to have like more conversations, I've learned how to like pull this from certain people and be like, oh, okay, like how do we keep the conversation flowing? And that was mm-hmm. my whole thing. I was like, I want to highlight like these bands. Like I want people to also know like not just music and that, but know the the people behind like who yeah. are creating that music or who are creating like these like you know awesome images or like videos and stuff like who's creating all this stuff. And I'm like, people need like I, I feel like that's a cool thing. Um, that and then everything else that I've try to make like content wise is to provide like a small little thing that hey you don't have to make this you don't have to pay for this but you can share it and help people come out more to your shows you know what i mean because that's at the end of the day that's what we like all want to do like yeah, we're trying to support events. everybody mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think i i don't know if it's because i'm seeing it through one side but in my like now in my experience that's what everybody's trying to do like uh i don't find as many people trying to hinder other like people's way you know what i mean like i feel like there's a lot more jealousy along like a while back in the scene but like now i think everybody's just really happy to see everybody else do really well um and uh it's it was very weird for me to think that like one band like wouldn't like this other band to have like the opportunity yeah, no, i'm like i feel like everybody's like trying to pull along for each other yeah everyone's so fucking hyped i remember uh i've talked to like a f- so many people and everybody's got like their favorite bands like from around here and i i've uh, I like being able to say that like yeah there's some of my favorite bands are from here and I was like that's really cool to be able to say that recently you know how the Spotify's done that uh, recap thing of like what oh, you've yeah. listened to uh, yeah most of them were like Texas bands yeah. I was like, it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, th- I think I think it's so cool that you're able like, we're able to do that that we have like as many like talented bands like, again spanning whatever genre you want to listen to because I I that is one thing that I've kind of looked at and had to be serious about it. Like, okay, like, I support so many bands. I mm-hmm. go, that doesn't necessarily mean that these are my favorite bands. You know what I mean? But, like, I'll be damned if I'm not going to support them, like, fucking working on it. Because mm-hmm. I, I think when I used to 
not want to do that. I think it was just very, like, arrogant of myself to be like, oh, that's not good, so I'm not going to support it. And it's not the fact that it's not good. I've learned in, like, just getting older, I'm like, oh, I just maybe just that don't understand it's not for me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, it's it doesn't hit for me. But once I started just being supportive of everything and everyone's doing, I'm like, dude, I see, like, uh, just how great, like, all this shit is. Like, and it's so much... It's such a better position for myself to mm-hmm. be like, I fucking, like, yeah, what do you need? Like, let's help. Like, doing, even if it's sharing a post or fucking, like, uh, going to a show, like, stuff like that just, like, makes whoever's performing, whoever's doing something, like, feel good. You know, it, it, and it goes a long way, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some of, like, your, like, favorite bands, like, at the moment, like, from the, mm-hmm. let's call it that Texas list. <laughs> Texas list? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, like I said earlier, Bleed. Late. Uh, those guys are so good. Mm-hmm. I just wish they played more shows. They got a show coming up actually. Oh yeah, on the twenty seventh of this month. Nice, really fun. Uh, I think it's cheap steaks. Okay, so I can't. I'm excited for them. Um, there's bleed. My friend released a new demo, and that band uh, spit my rage. Spit my rage. Okay. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. What is that? Uh, um, kind of like it's like. He's probably gonna. No, make it. He's gonna make fun no, of me. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> like, I'll listen to it. <laughs> it's really good though. Yeah, they're playing tonight, and um, there's them. There's Ozone. Uh, who else? It's just nuts that I've yet to catch Ozone. Like it's crazy. You haven't like, seen them? I haven't seen Ozone at all. At all. Are they play not, not, not live. live. Like I literally, they're always around. Yeah. <laughs> they got a show all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually. I'm. I'm really grateful that they gave me the opportunity to shoot pictures for them. Yeah. They're releasing a seven inch. Oh, I don't shit. know. I don't know when. They said somewhere in the fall, but. I have photos that I haven't posted yet. I keep texting them every time they post something. I'm like, <laughs> when can I post my stuff? And they're like, can you please wait for the thing to drop? And I was oh, like, okay. I need to get that then. I need to put it up in here. I, I can, next show, if I catch them, I'm going to be like, hey, can I get that little flyer and give to people? Yeah. <laughs> my girlfriend wanted one. She she saw it, reposted it, and she's like, it's really sick. I, I really like the red font. And I was like, the red font does come up. Yeah. <laughs> but then... Uh, a band called The Unit, or not The Unit, they're called Unit. Um, I'm at the. That's right. Write I, it down I, later. I, 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 like, I, I hate that, like, it's I on the spot. That question, it's on the spot. But every <laughs> time, like, I realize, like, dude, if you ask me, like, what's my favorite. I, I had this the other day, but someone asked me what's my favorite food, and I'm just like, um. And I was like, I like coconut because I was eating coconut. Like that's the only reason I came up with that answer. Like it wasn't, like, it wasn't because I had a list and I was ready to go. I was just like, yeah, I really like coconut. But like what I was eating was coconut. I'm just like, that's oh why God. it came to mind. Like, but I'm like, I'm really terrible about being put on the spot. So I always like every time I ask those questions, I'm like, I need to like ease into those or like do something because like you, if you're not prepared like on the spot, it's kind of hard to start thinking up yeah like i well, like my friends make fun of me because they're like all you listen to is like three letter bands and i was like so <laughs> <laughs> literally my hat <laughs> oh is that a yeah, <laughs> <three-letter>, <laughs> every time i get questions about it at work they're like what does that mean and i was like it's just bib it's just bib. a band <laughs> <laughs> just a band that's the same thing. i had turf in here and they were like yeah if you want a good like new metal band like if they have a number in the name mm-hmm. like they had a, like a rules for like their list and i'm like but they went do they I don't, they came for so they I guess were waiting for that question so when I asked them they're prepared they literally went on for like five minutes and just like had like both of them like went uh, um, back and forth just naming bands I'm like holy shit like that's I go how do you listen to all like keep them straight like all those bands um, but yeah I, I think um, I think it's really awesome that there's like bands again like locally and just like you know Texas in general that are just doing some really like awesome shit but um so you were saying like this is you in shooting and stuff like that. It's just uh, you're you're keeping it as a hobby. You think that's like yeah. what you want to keep it as? Yeah. Um, it started off as a hobby at first. I wasn't really confident in my work. Mm-hmm. Like the first hardcore show I ever actually went to was like a house show. Okay. In Grand Prairie, uh, it was like a memorial show, and that's where I met all my friends. Mm-hmm. So like the first time I ever met my friend uh, Foz, which was funny because we were supposed to meet at another show but we never like linked up Mm -hmm. he was like somewhere else and I was somewhere else and he saw me at the show he's like Marcus and I was like yeah I was like Foz and he's like what are you doing here I was like (laughs) I like this kind of of music like (laughs) like I I saw the flyer and I was like let me shoot (laughs) let me just pull up and shoot yeah it's just 
So you were just going like just the shows, like on yeah. your own. Basically? Yeah, I just see like a flyer or something, and I just really like, okay, this looks interesting. Let me let me go. Shoot see, that's or really something. cool, and I feel like there needs to be more of that. Like for people, I um, I know like a lot of people like feel like they need to have somebody with them, and I get like it's it's it, it's nice, but like you gotta kind of get over that because like, you, you won't be able you to miss have out. fun yeah. you miss out on all these like again like you miss out on meeting people that you would have met there or just like the experience alone um i've i've seen that a lot more and just like shows that, or stuff that i want to do it's like okay like if no one's around i'll ask like one person and they're like no i'm like okay cool like i'm not gonna not go because mm-hmm. i don't have somebody to go with you know what I mean? it's, and luckily now i've been lucky enough to make so many friends around mm-hmm. that if I show up to shows alone, like, I'm going to know somebody. And I'm like, okay, I can hang out with them. Or I can just, like, enjoy the show and meet somebody new or whatever. Like, it's it's fine. It's going to be, like, uh, fun. Which is, it's it's weird to have, like, people come up to me and, mm-hmm. like, know me now. And I'm just like, oh, like, uh, that's that's where, like, you get my, like, oh, shit, I don't know, like, what you're expecting, like, right now. Like, like I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, yeah, because I literally, I literally am, like, I, I think people, like, sometimes, like, see clips of this and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, like, yeah. You can talk to anybody. Yeah, it's like, he's, he's on all the time. And I'm like, then they catch me outside. I'm just like, oh, yeah, so, all right. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like that, too. Like, um, one time me and my girlfriend went to uh, this little pop-up shop, mm-hmm. and somebody was wearing the same hat as me. Yeah. And they're like, oh, cool hat. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I just walk away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had, I've had that. I literally have one piece of clothing that does that with people, and it's uh, a Run the Jewels shirt. Which um, one? Uh, it's like a it's it's from their tour, like that they did with on the RTJ three, mm-hmm. and it's like this like it looks like a fucking metalcore shirt, like an old school. <laughs> it's like super colorful, like has like this crazy like monster design, and. I, I've had that shirt for like fucking years and every time I wear it Everybody's someone someone <laughs> somewhere at least one person is gonna like say something about it and like and then there's like one person like I forgot where we were it was like me and my girlfriend were walking by and like it was like three people that day and then one guy went around and like found me later he was like oh yeah like I really like like this stuff and like I was like oh you really want to talk about it I'm like okay <laughs> so I know like sometimes like and I've actually used that as a strategy before when I go to stuff alone I'll wear that shirt I'm like and I'll have somebody that'll say something um but yeah, it's it's stuff like that where uh, I think like if you're just a tiny bit open to that and have that two minute conversation, there's your like break into like, oh maybe like that's somebody that you can keep talking to. Maybe you meet someone new friend or whatever. Mm. Like one time, uh, I was wearing this. Uh, I wear this hat all the time, mm-hmm. but I was wearing a different hat to the gym, and this guy was like, uh, oh, he's like, what what hat is that? And I was like, oh, they're called Dead Heat. He's like, so like, you like the band Power Trip? And I was like, it's funny you said that because I saw them. Like for a good minute, what they were active, yeah. And he was like trying to have a conversation about how he opened up for them, but he never told me the name of their band. Oh shit! <laughs> so I was like, "That's cool, man." And yeah. then, like, I go do my workout. My girlfriend was like, "How come you didn't tell me you shoot photos?" I was like, "And eh, you probably wouldn't care." <laughs> yeah, and th- so that's hard to get through, right? Like the uh, the uh, being confident in what you do um, to offer it out mm-hmm. to be like even just like again just for fun, and uh, that's something that I've had to really get over especially with this because i'm like i can get away with like just sure talking to people that i know and my friends mm-hmm. but this upcoming year and, and even like starting now i want to talk to people that i have nothing like that in common with, in common mm-hmm. with to push that myself to really like step outside that comfort zone because like um even like with you like we know each other like uh, you know internet based or whatever yeah. but i'm just like oh okay, i don't know if they like want to come <laughs> on but i was like oh, i was like i but i started just being well, it's because I saw the episodes with Jesse and Ed, and I was—I texted Ed after his episode, and I was yeah. like, I really want to be on. He's like, <laughs> he's like, well, tell OC, and I was like, can you tell him for me? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny to me that I still am like, does anybody want to be on? Like, it's, it, I, and I understand that people do, but I also, it doesn't make sense to me, too, mm-hmm. sometimes, where I'm just like, oh, people, like, want to, like, come on. And, and they're, just talk. they're entertaining. Yeah. Like, I think, I think it, like, again, they're, they're, they're just fun. They're just, like, a fun time. Um, like, if you really, like, if you really enjoy podcasts, you'd enjoy this one. <laughs> yeah. I, I would hope so. That's what mm-hmm. I'm trying to, but that's why, like, I'm not, um, worried about how to push this or whatever, because I'm like, I know if I just keep, it consistent and like 
what I want it to be. Somebody will fun. find it. It's gonna, and yeah, it's going to share fun. it. Around and I'm like, and there's stuff. so many people that I've talked to. Uh, even if I was looking at it, I was like, oh, when is it going to blow up? I go, one of these bands will. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of like fucking good like like bands like, and creators. People will search people them come up, around. They'll find this. I'm like, or cool, something. yeah. You know what I mean? And that that was another thing where I'm like, dude, like a lot of these bands, like you, they're small, so like you search them and you get nothing from them. So like, if you become a fan at them or like they go on tour or like a run or something and you find them and you want to know most stuff about them. I'm like, yeah, there's like, and like, I'll have, there'll be at least one thing like for the band, like where they can look up a whole ass like podcast. And if you want to become a fan, like there's, okay, you have enough information to yeah. become like a really good fan, like right off the bat. You know what I mean? Um, so it's, I, I think that's like one of the like, kind of service that I get to offer for that. But um, yeah, they're just fun. And it, it just, it just blows my mind sometimes <laughs> that like people want to be on. And then like people that I have no idea who they are like reaching out is really like insane like i had like a, a few bands out of town really and then i had a, an agent like for some artists and mm-hmm. she's like i have like two artists like that would like it would it would really like love to be on and to talk about this and i'm like i don't even know who they are like at all like and they're like part of an agency i'm like okay like what the fuck and yeah. then, so that's why i was like maybe i have to like get a little more organized with this and just and book because like once I well, I tried you said they're out of town right so like how was that work would so, they so come in the day of their show or something or? they were they were on tour it depends so I, that's the one thing I've uh, I've debated on and I'm thinking on where to take the podcast because like initially it was just local because that's what Chill Sounds and Breakdowns mm-hmm. the festival was and then I'm like you know what I'm gonna open it to Texas so um, there's a few bands that I was. Uh, uh, wanted to go down to like Austin and Houston to do, um, or if they come up, whatever, like be able to mm-hmm. do that. I was like, okay, that's a little more liberating. But then, like, we have so many touring acts come by that it would be, I was like, it'd be kind of cool to just, like, hey, as part of their tour, if they give me a minute, then they can come by, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and sit in and have like a podcast. Um, it's just, it's just debating on whether, like, I would like to do it. I don't like do I did Zoom once. You did that um, once? Yeah, I did it once for Atlantic Blue, uh, uh, Kyle Kirby's band, mm-hmm. um, because his guitar player was in the UK. You know what I mean? And I was like, that's kind of just sick. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? So I like, I try to figure it out, and it's just not my favorite. You know what I mean? It's just not as uh, personable as like having someone in the room. So I've had other people ask, like, oh, like, do you do Zoom? And I'm like, I really would like not like to. How would that um, work, anyways? Like, is it? So we have like. Uh, I think I had him hooked. Like, I had the laptop right here. <laughs> yeah. And, like, so I just... You get to save the session, I think, on Zoom. So I saved this video. And he he recorded his own audio. And he sent me the audio file. So I just synced that up to that. And then basically it was another, like, angle to the camera, to the multicam. So I just had to cut his in. Um, it would have been DJ, funny if you had the computer right here and the mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just left, I mean, that probably could have worked, to be honest with you. Um, it probably would have worked better because, like, it is weird because DJ had to mix in his audio to this audio file like and had to line it up to make sure like they went right so that's where it got a little complicated i'm sure there's a way to do it where it works but uh, i do like the in-person like better it just seems to like work i think so simpler yeah it's very easy like show up and then you know you hang out um yeah but i i I want to do a lot it's just like figuring out what my structure is because i'm like okay so my consistency is like i need to the podcast can't really stop like Mm -hmm. i need to be able to like i can take like planned breaks but like i've been taking how often do you do it how often do you do the podcast what i what the ideal schedule should be it should be two every week um is what my like Mm -hmm. i want to do at least one so like if i but i uh ideally i want to do two every week they're not i've kind of streamlined my editing process Mm -hmm. so it's a lot easier to put them out um it's the extra stuff that kind of gets complicated but i've also like worked out that kind of like uh workflow of that because like going through and having to create like clips of like stuff i need to do it that same day because if i go back i lose like the momentum of like what those because i'll go i what i used to do is go through and edit the entire podcast and just mark Mm -hmm. which clips i was going to use and then go back and cut them later but i would cut them like a day or two later so then i'd be watching them and i'm like what was the exact moment that i thought like was gonna be funny or or was gonna be cool or or, like interesting and so i would forget so now like it's a a little bit longer process to edit but i if i catch like something i was like this will look good yeah and now i'll immediately take that make it and then like move on and then keep editing so that way when it's done it's done like i can move on and and work on other stuff but that's what i want to do but i also like i want to do like a a a different type of show where it's like a have you ever thought like taking a podcast like to the post like when all the bands are playing or something i've thought about that it's just taking all this shit is annoying <laughs> i would have to have like help uh and bert was helping me for a while which is when we did like out of town gigs so we we did a 
one of the ones me and Bert did was like down in like by Austin and we took like everything. But it was two of us setting everything up and it was still like not ideal because we got there and uh, set up. And like, so we're both setting up. We're all like, we lugged everything like upstairs to like uh, this dude's apartment. And then we're just like setting up and immediately I'm like, okay. Let's let's just turn it on You're and like just go. So it was like, yeah, you know, you it, it looks like that. You can see me. Like, so I'm sweating. Um, so it's also figuring out it right way because I've I've had that. I'm like, okay, I have to be able to set everything up and chill for a bit and then do that. So it's just a bigger process, which I don't mind if like the like if I really want to talk to that band because there's a few that I, I've been wanting to go out of town for, mm-hmm. um, like down in Austin and stuff. Like that. I'm like. It'd be nice, but if it's just me, I'm like, this is just way too much shit to set up by myself. Sometimes I'm, like, nervous about hitting up bands to take photos for them. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, you know what? I'll just buy a ticket, go to the show, and if they like the pictures, they like the pictures. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, a, marketing yourself is a kind of, like, a, a, a tough thing because you have to be, like, just, like, confident about what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, it, so you think that's something, like, you struggle with? Uh, it's not... I'm not really a confident person. Yeah? Yeah, I've never <laughs> been. I'm just chill it's just like sometimes i take pictures and i i try not to overthink about it like mm. like the amount of pictures that i post yeah i don't take that many so like you'll see like half of what i've taken yeah like most pictures i've ever taken was like 17 pictures put it to my phone edit and then release like eight or five of them yeah so like I never. I'm, I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. Cause I, I never went. I never went to school for like photography or anything. I never learned anything. See, that's. I think you need. I think you need to look at it because it's. It's what I've been told it, again. Because I. I think the same stuff. Like I'm just like, I, I'm not like. I don't know what I'm doing. Is what I like always say. It's like I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, I had my friend. My friend. Uh, my friend Dizzy. His name is Dizzy uh, mm-hmm. Davis. Uh, he's very good at pulling you back from like the picture because mm-hmm. i'm always like super zoomed into it so here i'm like i don't know what i'm doing but then like he's like step back a little bit and look at like what you're doing now like what it looks now versus where it started and i'm just like oh yeah and then he's like well how do you you know he's, he's like oh how do you like edit the whatever on the camera it's like how do you do it oh like i do this and this and i learned how to do it it's really easy mm-hmm. and he's like okay but i don't know that and it's like Okay, and then he's like, he's like, he like took me like step by step, and I'm like, okay, so I do know certain things. So I think like you do know certain things. It's just once you're too close to the picture, you don't. It's it's especially like if you're not confident in it, which is very easy to do um, when you look at like other people doing others. Because I do that too. I'm just like, oh, I'm not doing what they're doing. Yeah, you know I mean? and that's the only time I start feeling like I I don't know what I'm doing is when I compare myself. Um, but then when I stop and just you know look at what I what I'm actually doing and producing and putting out i'm like it's good like people like it i like it and like that's the biggest measure that i have like it's when i don't start liking it then i'm like okay what do i need to do to (laughs) to like it you know it's it's i think you're we're always obviously like our harshest critic but there's a there's a point in time where we have to give ourselves like the credit that we have earned you know what i mean because you've been doing it for a while it is something like again you give me a cram- camera and try to like put the stuff out that you do like i don't know how to do that like <laughs> off the bat you know what i mean and it's just it's it's not so i think i think that's something that you should definitely like feel like you've earned that credit and like you know what you're doing like and, and like because you're saying like you know i edit on my phone and have them right out like like that yeah. and there, like you know that's something that someone doesn't just know how to do that you know what i mean you've learned how to get there and how to make it feel like it's nothing you know what i mean that's because that's like sometimes it feels like oh i'm not really doing anything but you've made you've trained yourself you've learned that you know what you're doing and that's why it feels so easy to you to a point where it's like oh i'm not doing much but you are you know what i mean so i think that's definitely something i would definitely like put on you that you should definitely feel like that because the stuff you put out is really fucking cool um and like it uh it is at least again in my experience and it's not even something you have to hear from like other people's like i dead ass like saw like you know your pictures and was like immediately like again i kind of knew you and i was just like yeah like i was like i need this now like well let's figure it out well and it was like during that ice storm and shit like that i remember, I remember you following yeah. up like he's like oh shit if it gets there and it's like raining like i'll send you another one but i was really like dead ass passionate about that picture so that like inspired me to have like that like immense like passion reaction to be like this is fucking cool like i was hella excited like you have no idea how many people i fucking like <laughs> showed, talked to yeah. and showed it and then i was like yeah it's there so literally every time like, i'm happy that people get to see that like every time they walk in here and then um 
and I get to tell people like every time like anyone points it out or I point it out, I get to tell them about you. You know what I mean? And so that's um, at least one person that you'll know for sure is like saying yeah. good shit about you because like, it's cool. I like, think, and I like, I'm super excited that you keep doing that and you do it because you like it. You know what I mean, it's one of the the biggest defining factors with me and like who I find like that does cool stuff and who I find like to be a cool person mm -hmm. is like the level of authenticity and doing stuff that you love. And I feel like that comes through in, in your pictures and everything that you put out. Um, it's very like, it's very nice to see that. And I think like, I think you need to know that and, like, and, and be like, like, you know, a little more confident with it. Cause it's, it's really cool stuff. And uh, again, now hearing like where it comes from, like it, it's, it makes it even better, you know, that you fucking love doing that. And it's, it comes through on the pictures, but it also comes through in like how you describe it and say it. So I, I, I think that's cool as fuck, man. Like, so. Yeah. I was again. thinking like people outside of the scene, they're like, you ever think about making like those little design thingies with mm -hmm. your photos and stuff? And I was like, yeah, but I probably only make like a handful. Like I want to make a lot. You just you, I would I would just go like that's honestly that's a fucking cool idea. Like that's a really cool idea and just make it be like, like hey. each page. Like my idea was like each page about the bands I shoot the most, like Ballista and Ozone. Yeah, and, and I'm like yeah, it'd be cool. <laughs> but cool, see what's I just need to find a person that can help me. Uh, put that together <laughs> the cool thing is that in this area everybody we, yeah you'll, you'll, just, find, you'll yeah, find somebody yeah, yeah it's so fucking easy to find someone to help you uh you, yeah it's it's be uh i think i was talking to an artist uh named che um and i think i don't know i can't remember who they got this from but they were like be good at what you know how to do mm -hmm. and then for everybody everything else that you come up short find somebody that can do it like you know what i mean um and i think that's the right attitude like be don't let yourself get um, overwhelmed with like oh in order like let's say the zine like in order to do that like I have like the picture and stuff but how do I like get that together and do this and like oh I can't do it you know and just kind of leave it there um, when you can find someone like to help you out with that and then create something cool you mm -hmm. know what I mean and then again if you want to do it that's the attitude like if you're thinking about doing it I would just do it you know what I mean and see worry about people's reaction later you know like I was gonna make I was gonna make like my own like a little demo version of it yeah see how that comes out and then if i like it i'll just send it off or send it out to somebody and be like hey this is the outline the blueprint and mm -hmm. try to make it look like this yeah i think that'd be really fucking cool if you do we'll put one put it up, we'll put it up <laughs> yeah i said you want or something yeah yeah send I'm, I'm telling you send me one and i'll let, let let me know how much it is i'm paying for that shit because again like i i'm definitely a huge fan of what you do and I, I find it cool like that you are creating that stuff and i think you have like uh, a lot of like, like again even just that idea but you have like a few different ways that you could keep building on like what you're, you're like I remember when there was a show I went to and somebody was like explained to me their camera yeah. and like there's stuff and I, I'm like standing there like listening to them talk and I'm like mm. I have no idea what you're talking <laughs> about he's like telling me stuff and then my friend was like dang y'all talked for a really long time I was like no he did all the talking I was just standing <laughs> there me, yeah. <laughs> I mean again that's I think that happens and it's just being open about like listening to that stuff and being okay with like hey i don't know anything about you you're talking about um it, it, again it's just it's just not i think the biggest thing for me was like making myself not feel less than whenever stuff like that would happen where i'm like oh they're all talking about their cameras and how they set up their mics i was talking to someone who was like oh like have you ever decided to do live streams and i'm like oh i've been thinking about it and he's like oh well, you need you know how are you gonna run this this and that i'm like i have no idea i haven't looked into it yet just put you know your phone I mean? up on instagram live right and then, so I'm going to do that. So I'm like, like, so we're sharing like a, uh, uh, we have this long ass mm -hmm. chill sounds and three, uh, fucking, uh, chill sounds and three, uh, <laughs> the chill sounds and breakdowns three, uh, super cut of the band. So there's like an over an hour video of like performances throughout the day, um, that Bert did, uh, Bert shot. And we're going to, I was like, I'm just going to premiere on Monday. Cause I've been trying to do it where I can live stream and we can talk about it together. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I haven't figured it out. And I've held on to this video for, Almost a fucking year now, Jesus. and not put it out. And I'm just like, you know is what? It the, just needs to fucking be out. Was that the one at the post? Or was that yeah, the post? that's the one we did at the post. Yeah, yeah. D DJ DM me. I felt so bad. DJ what? DM me, and he was like, uh, "What do you say?" He DM me to shoot for that. Oh yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, I'll make it." Well, then it was like during a transition where the Polaroid film was getting expensive, and I was doing uh, Polaroids, yeah. and. Uh, I never got I never got back to him about it. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, well, we'll give you a ticket to snack. You just show up, and 
or you shoot, do your thing. And I never got back to him. And I was like, wow. That's why he brought you here today, Marcus, to to come (laughs) to to guilt trip me. Guilt trip me. me. (laughs) No, but yeah, so we're going to release that. And like, I couldn't figure out, I I needed like a bunch of stuff to do it. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to do it in time, but I'm not going to keep holding on to something. So I'm just literally going to do it (laughs) on Instagram Live and just premiere. We'll like watch it together. But again, it's it's not letting you not be prepared. I was like, oh, then I'll figure it out and we'll do it next time. You know, it's cool. It's cool to keep learning Mm -hmm. and keep getting better. Like, it's not, that's that's where the issue I think is is like if you stay stagnant and like are okay with doing that, that's fine. But then don't be mad like that you're not making progress and stuff. Yeah. But if you're making small little like adjustments and getting better, again, once you step back from that picture and look, holy shit, you know this is way having this like if you would have came last year, you would have been a living room in my apartment. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? True, like, yeah. Now it's got an actual like you know room dedicated to it where I don't have to like move stuff. So like stuff comes further along. You know what I mean? It's just little steps at a time uh but man marcus i just really want to say thank you for stopping oh, by no i problem. really really appreciate it even like you saying like there's like oh yeah i've watched you were like i watched the jesse one i was like that's the first one and i was like um, well, how long how many times has he been on jesse's been on twice yeah one was with jonathan and then one was that one they was, were the first one that one was funny <laughs> we got fucking drunk that's what happened. that's so hilarious especially when uh they talked about that new york guy oh yeah. just, oh me, the me, book of bad yeah. me, me and jake were in the car listening to it and we're like dying laughing while we're sitting in traffic <laughs> and i was like this is dude stupid. those fucking is it the when they what would you say when like oh yeah if you're staring at him too long he's like what am i wearing something yeah else? i'm like i fucking love that so much um yeah jonathan's fucking funny he wrote down all those stories really? Like, really? Yeah, because he told me I ran into him like at a, a emo night, and he he was just we had just gotten back from Europe, and he's like, bro, and he shows me his phone, and he's like, this is everything I have, <laughs> like so I can come back to the podcast. So I'm like, whenever you fucking <laughs> want, man. Um, but yeah, then to you too, like if you ever like want to come back and just hang out, we can. I, I've been wanting to do like where multiple people are here. I mean, today would have been cool. Yeah, um, I'll try to get them next time. But you know, <laughs> but we'll 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 do like bigger stuff. I want to I want to grow it to then when there's just a, not necessarily just like oh you're part of a band or something, but it's like uh, you could shoot photos and you can have someone from a band, something like just like mixed ones. So mm-hmm. it's just like fun conversations and stuff. Um, but I'm sure like we're, uh, you're gonna come back, man. It's it is it's fun, and I wanna I wanna keep seeing like what you're doing. Um, and keep creating some stuff but that zine I'll be your first customer (laughs) let me know Uh, but thank you again for coming by I really really appreciate it Uh, this has been episode 77 with Marcus aka point and shoot videos no point and shoot videos shooting point photos shooting point photos (laughs) the fuck am I doing I'm an embarrassment come on I even brought you stickers shooting point shooting point what the fuck stickers yeah oh shit let me see. We went through all that. We <laughs> forgot to do this. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's fucking. Everybody likes the monkey one. <laughs> the monkey one. <laughs> fucking sick. You're going on the fridge, boy. <laughs> Second one on the fridge. Thank you. It says right here Shooting Point Photos. Thank <laughs> you, Marcus. Episode 77. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time. Breakdowns. <laughs>